I'm so excited to get to talk to you. There's been a lot of uh, like USFL news going on. And also I'm really excited to, to get to chat with you. Um, so let's start a little bit about your background. And so, like you said, you're from Dallas, Texas, but then you played at LSU. So um, didn't you go to Ole Miss first? No, I went to LSU first. Straight LSU out of high first. school, I went to LSU. Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay, got um, re Recruited, went to LSU for three and a half years, graduated, got my uh, degree. And then I went to Oklahoma State for a semester, you can say. And then after Oklahoma State, I went to Alabama and then to finish my college career. Okay. So that was a lot right there. So. Yes, ma'am. A lot. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so what um what went on from you know going from LSU then to Oklahoma? What was like what was your factor? It broke up. Oh, so what had you go from LSU then over to uh to transfer after that? Um well, the reason why I left LSU, I got suspended my last year there. And then I, during my suspension, that's when I finished school, graduated. Okay. Um, I had to make I had to do a lot of maturing at LSU. So that's what that's that's what led me to go to Oklahoma State. Yeah, LSU's got that reputation a little bit. So <laughs> Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am, it does. So talk a little bit about that then. Um, because I Every time I talk to athletes, I hear that a lot. Like I have to mature and get to this point where you know I could really develop myself and all. So, um, what did it take for you to to learn to do that? Like, what what did you have to go through for that to happen? Um, just a lot of, like I said, a lot of growing up. Um, just having to separate myself from the crowd and learn things from my older peers and not trying to continue to do the young things that I was doing at the time. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and it's it is difficult when you're young because that's all you can see. You don't see the right. necessarily. So, what when did it click for you that you're like, hey, let me look towards my whole future and not just in the moment right now? Uh, it definitely clicked when I got suspended the, for the whole entire year. That that changed my I can say that changed my mindset, changed the way that I was looking at things. I couldn't keep pointing the fingers at other people. I had to actually stand up and look in the mirror and realize, hey, if you don't get it together, you won't be playing football any much longer. Yeah. And I'm sure that it's was right. the driving factor was, hey, I want to play football, and so I've got to get on the right track here. Yes, ma'am, 100%. Good. So then you were able to keep playing, though, after that, which uh, was obviously yes, a bad thing. How did you feel about being able to continue your football career after other two? I mean, that's – I mean, it was it's what I wanted to do with my life. So, I mean, I was happy. I, I, I couldn't complain at all. I was, I was more than blessed with other opportunities to still play football and have other schools still contact me. Yeah. And then so from Oklahoma yes, to Alabama. And how did you end up over there? Um, After Oklahoma State, um, it was just – I had a, a knee injury there. Mm -hmm. uh, um, lateral meniscus injury, so it wasn't nothing bad over there. It just went from there to Alabama and him. And what I, was I got in contact with a kill glass? That's really what drove me to go to uh, Alabama and him. Okay. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Gotcha. So, what was it like over there in Alabama? I mean, it, it was not what I was used to. Mm -hmm. Coming from SEC, going to HBCU. It's definitely not what I was used to, but it was one of the best experiences I had in college, honestly. Really? Yes, ma'am. What was it about there that was uh, just so special for you? Just the HBCU culture and then, like I said, really the HBCU culture. I, I wasn't used to it, and I always heard of it, and me actually being a part of it, it changed my mind about HBCU for sure. Yeah, and what kind of – what were your – ideas of it before as opposed to now what was my ideas of hbcu before um whew, i had a lot of ideas small schools boring the talent level not being the same but i shortly quickly realized when i went the talent level but everything is still equaled up it's just smaller names basically Right. Yeah. And so it does yes, give you a, a chance to kind of 
make a name for yourself because like you said, it is a little right. bit smaller. Um, and you were certainly able to do that there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, now talk a little bit about the fact that you're so tall to be a wide receiver. I mean, you're I'm sure you get asked all the time if you play basketball. Yes. <laughs> Everywhere I go, you play basketball, you you play basketball, who you play for? But um honestly, I don't know where the height came from. My mom is five four, five five, and my dad is six six one. So I'm the tallest out of everybody. I do not know where the height came from. There must be somebody down the line that had some extra height in there. And I need to meet them, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> so how have you been able to use your height to your advantage in football? Um, I just feel like my height plus my speed plus my athleticism is a disadvantage to basically anybody I line up against. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, have you played basketball at all? Did you ever do any of that? I mean, I, I play basketball, of course, but it wasn't my best thing. I'm good at it now. I ain't saying I'm trash, but I'm actually good. It's just you dunk. I take myself in football over basketball any day. Yeah, yeah. Now, can you dunk? Oh, yeah, that's easy. I'm six five. I have I have to go how to dunk. <laughs> Sometimes they don't know how to. I've seen it. You're right. I played basketball in college, and I've seen okay. some of the tallest girls, and I'm like, they jump this high off the ground. Yeah. I, girls are I, I different, got, I, I know. Got, I got a little bounce to me. I got a little bounce. Yeah, I, I'm sure you do. So um, so talk a bit about going to the USFL and what that experience has been like for you. Um, I actually went to USFL last year, and I was there the last, say, three Three, three games of the season, got a late call. And then I was fortunate enough to get trade. Well, I got picked up by New Orleans Breakers this following season, which is a blessing. And it was some of the best times I had, honestly. It was, it, it's fun. I love the I love USFL. Yeah. And it's really giving a lot of guys a shot to keep their career going and see right. And you don't always see that. I mean, I have a lot of friends. You know, they would be pushing thirty and hoping to still make it in the league. <laughs> and, the seats playing, you know? and it's tough. It's tough, but it's great that they have this opportunity now. Uh, so, have you been able to talk to any NFL teams from there? Like, what kind of communication have you had? Um, I, I've talked to a couple NFL teams after this season. Um, I'm I'm sad that it hasn't went further than just talking, but I have talked to NFL teams and it's still it's geared it's definitely given um opportunities that, that wasn't there before. Yeah. Which is great because you know you still have so much talent and you're athletic and young, like you're saying. Um do you have any like buddies or friends that have been able to even take it a step further than that or what's been the overall experience you've seen? Um actually my cousin Josh Butler, he um he just recently got signed the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, um, no. good for him. Yes, man. He played for Michigan Panthers. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you see? Me? Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Michigan Panthers. Um, and then uh one of our fellow uh DBs, uh Neville, Neville Clark. Okay. He he got signed for the um Phillips. Okay, good. I mean, that's gotta be very encouraging for you. Yes, ma'am. What is your ultimate goal right now? My ultimate goal is to this upcoming season is to be the number one receiver, dominate, be the number one receiver, and then get myself back into the NFL. That's my number one goal. And so what are you doing right now to put that into motion and, and get, get yourself, you know, prepared for that? Uh, training. I'm training hard right now. We're rehabbing. Doing all the small things, small nicks and tears, if there were any, which it wasn't. Fortunately, thank God, um, just preventing them basically from coming. So staying in shape, hitting the weights, um, doing a lot of conditioning, just to be in in game ready shape when we first start. Yeah, and how often? Like how? Uh, like many days a week? Are you doing two days, or what are your workouts? Oh, I work out five days a week. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent. Five days a week. If if we don't, if we miss one day, it's four days a week. But it's five days a week every week. Who are you doing your workouts with? Uh, I I do a couple a couple of my workouts with D Rob. 
uh, one of the best receiver coaches out. Uh, I do I do my conditioning with Coach Rod. He was the uh, first rounder for the Saints a while back. Oh, and then nice. I do some of my speed work. I do my speed work in conditioning with Coach Rod, and then I do my speed work in some type of conditioning with my uh, where I went to. I'm sorry, where I went to. Um, what is it called? My uh, pro day testing and stuff. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And then this is something that gets talked about way too much in New Orleans is about the nutritional side of things and how, you know, here with the foods and everything, it's just so decadent. It seems like, what do you do? I mean, I'm sure you're burning a ton of calories. So what are you doing from a nutritional standpoint to, um, you ask that question again? Yeah. No, I was just saying, um, from a nutritional standpoint, what are you doing to maximize what your training is, is doing as well? Um, nutrition standpoint, I, I don't have a real nutrition standpoint on that. I eat, I eat good. I try to eat healthy sometimes. It ain't always trash and I don't eat a lot of junk food. Yeah. I stay drinking water. I drink a gallon a day. Um, I, I don't have a meal prep or anything, but I don't just eat trash every day. Yeah. And you young guys burn like a billion calories a day. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. We're working out in this Texas heat and this humidity is going to come out you 100%. Yeah. Now, do you come back to Louisiana much, like right now, or are you basically staying in Dallas? I'm staying in Dallas. Um, I really don't come back to Louisiana, but I, I was planning on coming to catch a game this year 100%. Yeah. Good. Well, what would you um, kind of give advice to, I know we talked a little bit about the, you know, kind of maturing and all, but from like, kids that are junior high high school that kind of had the same goals as you and can see you as like someone they can look up to what kind of advice do you give those kids to make it and what they need to do to accomplish that um the advice i would give to someone younger than me now is every day give give me 100 percent. i know you hear i know everybody here give 100 percent, give 100 percent, but me actually doing it this year and realize, give you 100% in practice, give you 100% with everything you do in life and everything just going to tra transition for you well. So you can't have half step anything that you're doing. Um, listen to your parents, <laughs> get good grades, because that's number one thing. We go to college to graduate first, which I accomplished. So I say really hit your books and then worry about the sports and everything after. That's good advice. And the younger, the better, huh? Don't wait till it's till you're. Don't wait till it's too late at all. Yeah. You're regretting. You don't want to wake up regretting it one day. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's so true. I hear that all the time. and That's great. So I always ask the guys I'm interviewing to give some advice to the kids because they, yes. it means a lot more when they hear it from someone that's already made it and played at the level that they get to. So right. I appreciate that. Advice for sure. So, um, well, I think that was pretty much all I had pretty just want to get to know you a little bit and hear how it's going, what you got coming up. So um, we will get this um, produced soon and we'll have it out and we'll put it all on social media and you'll get it all there too. Um, and then we'll probably send you a link so you can pick out a shirt and we'll send you one of those okay. as well. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate it. Thank you so Anything much. Else, just let us know. Thank you. We appreciate having you. I'm really thankful for your time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Hey, have a good day. You too. Bye.